Hello everyone, and welcome back to the channel. JC here with another video on Action Timing. Today we're gonna check, uh, well, more than check, we're gonna evaluate all the F2P supporters. And if you want to check only the highlights, go to the very end. At the very end, uh, there's gonna be highlights on which ones you should be building. Uh, uh, and if you enjoy the content, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and comment. Also, tell me what you want to see next. And sure, also sure. So we're only going to check right now the F2P supporters. Uh, I have the event list in the background. You cannot see it, but uh, with this, I'm going to guide myself because I, I don't remember all the supporters. And we're going to check the supporters that we get from events like Onigumo. I mean, in the, in the boxes, in the roulettes. We're also going to check supporters that we get on a special campaigns like Ingrid, for example, and Anna Rose. And we're gonna check also seasonal supporters, the ones that come with the seasonal packs, like, uh, like Rinko, here we have Rinko. Uh, so let's check them super quickly. And we're gonna start with Onigomo. Onigomo, as you can see, uh, just so that you know, for all this effect, this is the base effect when it's, uh, when you first acquire it, when it's level 1 is 1, uh, awakening 0, so you, you don't got anything. So all of the effects are going to double. These numbers, the green numbers, are going to double. Uh, if you want to check it here on collection, no, on inventory, I'm going to use Onigumo as an example. Uh, maybe it's not the best example, but it's usable with the active. So as you can see, it's 12% and it's 620. Uh, when here, one more time, here it says that it's 310 and 6 seconds. Uh, this one I didn't check because I have it 3 out of 5, but we know that it would be double. So it's 44%. Uh, just do that for all the supporters. And now, this one is good. It's, it's generally good. The problem is that we only receive this once. There is a whole controversy about this topic because Japan got the opportunity to... Th there were two servers a long time ago and Japan got the opportunity to get the supporter, uh, a rerun I mean, and we didn't and then we got the server merge and they decided not to rerun Onigumo here because Japan had already rerun that so <laughs> few people have this and most people who have it have it at S1 just like me. I got extra copies thanks to the tickets that we receive on the 300 day uh, login bonus, but that's another story. So it is uh, good, but, but, but something to take into consideration is that this is the weakest of the, of the trio. The trio is going to be Mido Haruka, which give you, if you have it in the active, 60% uh, more damage against human and damage reduction against them also. And... Fuma Amane, which gives you 50% more damage against uh, machines. So with that, you have all the traits covered. But unfortunately, uh, Onigumo is the weakest. It's a shame. Uh, I really uh, like this trio. Uh, but well, even so, it's really strong if you have it maxed out. Uh, you don't get uh, usually uh, more than 30% on damage increase. So 40%, it's 44% is really good. And the next supporter that we got was uh, Yosora. Yosora is also generally good, usable, but is um, not the best for uh, VR or uh, extreme challenging content. Let me explain. It helps to have HP recovery on challenging content. It helps to increase the amount of HP recovery that you get. But it, it helps you with survivability. You can do the same with damage. If you don't allow the enemy to hit you and kill them, you're not going to receive damage. So it's not the best, but it's definitely usable. Uh, so um, this is a good supporter but mm, something that you want to replace in the future, if you have it. Uh, 
<laughs> in the future, but this is a very old supporter. So if you have it, probably you have already replaced this one. So the next one is Karajina. Oh my god, poor Karajina. Katajina is very bad. Reduces the duration of all debuffs on you by 20% when maxed out. Um, there is only one stage that abuses debuffs and is uh, Queen Aragne. And she doesn't even abuse, abuse debuffs that, that much. It's not like a big deal. So there's little value in reducing the debuff duration. And also, it's only that. You're not getting uh, defense, damage reduction, damage, uh, HP regeneration, nothing. So it is one of the weakest effects. Even though it can be useful, we don't have a stage that is aggressive enough with debuffs for us to use this. Uh, and deals damage to one enemy. Increase the duration of all debuffs against it for 15 seconds by 50% when maxed out. So, um, nah, it is not that important. I mean, uh, the cooldown is usually just good enough for you to constantly debuff the enemies. In fact, most skills, well, the, the good skills, uh, usually last uh, sometimes even more than the cooldown. The debuff lasts more than the cooldown. Sometimes it's, it lasts like a couple seconds less than the cooldown. So it is no problem. It is not uh, a great effect to, to increase the debuff duration. Uh, unless your strategy is based on that and you're trying to use this arm. Maybe for that you want her on an active, but uh, I don't think so. The next one is going to be Mari. Mari reduces damage taken from all enemies by 36%. Very good. Except that it says when debuffed or stunned. Basically, the, the main appeal of this is to use it on um, maybe Queen Arachne, BR. But what's the problem here? Uh, maybe also PvP, but I don't like it. Let me explain. Uh, you have to take the first dam the first instance of damage. And that's assuming that after that you're going to get a debuff. And it's going to be full. It's without the damage reduction. So you get a lot of damage on the first hit. And if they debuff you, then you get the, the uh, damage reduction. Which is horrible, because you don't, don't want to be debuffed. So, yeah. Uh, but on the other hand, it gives you super armor. Super armor is a really good effect on the active. Uh, super armor sometimes allows you to just continue doing your combos and uh, destroy the enemy. It's a shame that it's on this passive. Uh, the active is usable. Not good, but usable. Uh, let's see. After that, we have... Ooh, this one is pretty good. Wait a moment. Where is she? Karajina. Huh? There is something wrong here. I don't see her. You are? Yes, you are. She's over here. Well, I, I am checking the. L let me see. Yeah, I am checking the order of the. Of the events. I guess that at the beginning they didn't have uh, this section organized. And that's why she's over here. I don't know. Oh, maybe because we have a different order in in Japan and NA. Maybe it's because of that. Uh, I don't know. So the next one is going to be uh, Shinonome Nanami. Nanami is pretty good. Uh, unfortunately, she's simplistic just as Josora. Because she... As Josora increases your HP restoration, she has an added effect that she increases the drop of potions uh, from dead enemies. And she also restores HP with the active just like Josora, but she also removes one debuff. Uh, well, I guess it's two debuffs when max out. So it is a little bit better than Josora. And it's usable for sure. But you don't want to rely on this one for the most part. Uh, this kind of supporter, Yosora and uh, Nanami, you would use them on solos for someone who doesn't have HP recovery like Spinel, for example. But uh, in other cases, Emily has HP recovery, uh, Shizuru has HP recovery, Kurinai has HP recovery. So 
in most cases you don't get that much value even if if you have hp recovery and you say the hp recovery increase is going to be great it's great for uh, characters who have a set amount of hp recovery like emily and shizuru because you increase that set amount but it's not great for characters whose hp recovery depends on the damage they deal like kurenai because you can just increase the damage and you're going to deal damage and also get more hp instead of only getting more hp recovery so uh, keep that in mind they are usable but uh, nowadays they are not as generally good as they used to be the next one is going to be this uh, I don't know if it's a boy or a girl, but it's this one. So, Haru. Haru, in my opinion, is not a, as, bas, uh, as bad as he or she seems at first. Uh, I, I don't remember if it's a boy or a girl. I didn't uh, research that and I'm gonna not going to check that. But um, it says, reduces cooldown of support skill by... 10 seconds. That's going to be 20 seconds when max out. It is not much. Uh, usually the the cooldown is going to be 60 seconds. So you don't get that much value. If you are combining this with the awakening skill that reduces cooldown, it's like a third of the cooldown is going to be reduced. And that's good. That's good. Uh, it gives more value on supporters who have a busted active. Uh, 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 I don't know, like Spinel, for example. Uh, wait a moment. Where are you? Where are you? This is Spinel. This is Spinel. Her active is very good. It's basically uh, stops the enemy. So, uh, and look at the cooldown. It's a 65 uh, seconds cooldown. So, the cooldown is going to be reduced more than with low cooldown uh, units but uh, why do i think this is better than it seems at first because of this reduces damage taken from all enemies by 24 uh, when max out and increases damage dealt to all enemies by 24 percent for 16 seconds it is kind of the effect that you would receive on a passive of, of any character, but you're receiving this as buffs, and you can use that in conjunction with, with Kana. It is not as bad as it seems, but you need to use it on the main. That's kind of the problem. Um, even so, I don't recommend you invest on this one. It is very niche, okay? If you want to abuse uh, buffs, maybe it's possible, uh, but um it's it's not a generate good then the next one was uh, mica 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 where are you mica big red girl here she is mica mica is uh, she used to be very bad because we didn't have debuffs uh back in the day or at least that many debuffs uh, but now she's pretty good. She increases damage dealt with skills to enemies with debuffs by 16%. That's amazing. At, unfortunately, she auto procs this effect because she burns the enemy with the active. The effect doesn't matter. That what matters is that she inflicts a debuff that uh, lasts for 10 seconds. So it is good, yes, uh, but it is limited to the uh, skills that's the, the main problem that I have with this supporter but it is pretty good uh, you may want to enhance this one uh, let's see after that the next event uh, more weapons and oof this one so uh, Belmer Belmer increases damage dealt to enemies with buffs by 16% so unfortunately we barely have enough content uh, I did some testing and now I know for sure uh, that buffed enemies are always going to be the ones that get the the icon on top of their heads and which is the enemy that gives that has a, a 
very annoying buff on their head is going to be the twins. The twins, especially the blue one. If you kill the red one and, and the blue one is alive, she's going to get a defense increase. So if you're fighting them and we if we get uh, more challenging content when, where these are the bosses, uh, then it would be a good idea to use it. But until then, it is not. She's not that great because she's only going to apply the damage increase on on uh, buffed enemies. And uh, Master Manny can also buff herself, but you don't want to let Master Manny buff herself, of course. Um, she also removes one debuff with the active, and that's the most value out of it. The knockup effect, those uh, they matter on PvP maybe, but on, on PvE it's not important. Then, the next event, ooh, this one. A uh, real shame that this uh, doesn't work as well. So, increases damage dealt to human-type enemies by 18% when maxed out. Pretty... Uh, mid? I mean, 30% uh, is kind of the standard. 22 if they if we have double effects. Uh, 20, 24 if we have double effects. And... This is just like not even 20. Uh, but then we have this effect that says restores 1% of, lo of lost HP every 3 seconds for 15 seconds upon scoring a critical hit. I tested it, but I'm still not sure if that number is exactly correct. Uh, obviously, it's going to be 2 when max out, 2% when max out. But uh, what do I mean by that? I use a uh, build to crit. And I would see the HP restoration that uh, every three seconds I would get 2% on my HP. Or it, it seems that I was restoring HP. I'm not sure if, if it really was 2% because I had a, a ton of HP, but it seemed like just too little. Maybe, I mean, it's 2%. Of course, it's going to be that little. Uh, it is extremely niche. And besides, this deals damage. And has a secondary effect if you are facing a human that uh, bleeds the enemy. That's horrible. Having a secondary effect that targets only a certain type of enemy? Well. Yeah. But what can you do with this? You can use this with Blue Felicia. It is not my favorite uh, option. But let me explain. If you have Blue Felicia in the main, she gives you defense. Uh, I'm going to put Blue Felicia so you, you know what I'm talking about here. Blue Felicia. She gives you defense on uh, healing for fifteen uh, for five seconds every fifteen seconds, so you're going to constantly activate that effect. But uh, you, I mean, you don't need it for the most part. Maybe on tower, uh, because on tower you're going to be able to crit on BR. You are not going to be able to crit, so you don't take advantage of that effect. It is not the best that Felicia, the red Felicia. So, yeah, sorry. As much as I like the concept, it just hits the mark because of the number. Uh, we still don't have this one. Weird. Uh, okay, let's go with Kato. Uh, no, this one is not F2P. Uh, Kato is excellent. 10 out of 10. Just build her. It's super good. But there's a caveat there. Uh, you have to be using a range attacker so increases damage dealt with range attacks on snare enemies for by 24 percent increases critical rate of, uh, of range attacks on snare enemies by 16 percent for seven seconds upon upon scoring a critical hit uh, i know the active initial condition is weird but eventually you're going to score a crit and then you're going to get the buff that and that's fine but you say i'm not going to snare the enemies yes you are yes you are the active has an extra passive that snares the enemy for four up to four enemies for six seconds and it applies every 4.5 seconds with a 50 percent chance to apply so it is not like super consistent but it happens it happens quite a lot so it is great and this is especially good on range attackers and if you are using the the uh, snake weapons it's super super good that re i really like that combo it's not Maybe the best because of the stats of the snake weapon. But it is very usable because you would uh, use the, the slush wave while the enemy is unable to move. And they get the multi-hits. Uh -huh. Now, the next one is going to be... 
Ooh, this is great. Uh, where are you? My god. This order is super, super weird. So, increase damage dealt by uh, Shirayuki. Shirayuki is going to increase damage dealt by demon type characters up to 36%. That's awesome. It is excellent if you have demon type characters and if your main attackers are demon type characters who like to use red. It is super, super good. Um, a must build for everyone. And the active is pretty good. It reduces speed for set 10 seconds up to 40%. That's really, really strong. I don't like the uh, uh, AOE or how how they uh, this active launches the ice, but I mean, it works. And I repeat, then this one. This one is uh, deceiving at first. Uh, so, what do we have here? We have Isen Nodoka. Nodoka increases gold gain by 16% when completing a quest. You may think, what, why do I want that? I mean, yes, I want to farm gold, but uh, most of the gold comes from the ingots. You don't care about that. You want to use this with Emily's Limited Weapon, because Emily's, Emily's Limited Weapon increases the effectiveness of the effects of the actives of a supporter, and this is... Uh, deals damage to random enemies and disarm them for 10 seconds when max out. That is a really long duration. It is really, really good. So, it is a, a strategy to use if you want to go for the disarm strategy. It is pretty good, especially with Emily, because this is the uh, one of the longest durations for disarms. Then we have Nino. Okay, Nino. Where are you, Nino? Let's go with Nino. Nino, here she is. Nino is going to increase damage dealt with range attacks by 30%. Generally good for range attackers. And it stuns the enemy. That's fine. The, I. It is not the best AoE, but it's usable, the AoE of, of this attack, so... It's also a nice way to deal damage to the enemy. You just have to position uh, so that the enemies are in a straight line. And then we have... Ooh, Sakuya. Sakuya reduces damage taken by demon type characters by 15%. Uh, no, that's going to be 30%. It is pretty good. A really good tool for defensive uh, demons. And increases your speed by 20% for 10 seconds and reduces the enemy's speed by 30% for 10 seconds. Really great active, actually. You should not uh, um, skip this one. It's super, super good. If I'm not mistaken, I have the two copies of those. Uh, then Aina. Aina is a little bit more niche, I guess, or it was, it used to be. But now she's very usable. So when using a machine type character, it reduces damage by... 30%. Great, great, actually pretty good for machines. Um, the thing is that machines don't like to go tanky on green for the most part. I mean, if you don't have anything better, you can just attach them, it's pretty good. And the active is just uh, not that great. So, omit the active. Let's see. Then, <laughs> this is where it starts to get funny. So, Granny, where are you, Granny? Granny. So, increases damage dealt with range attacks by 30%. Does this sound familiar? Yeah, it's an Enos effect, but it has more effects. Reduces damage taken from bleeding enemies uh, by 10%, becomes 20%. And she inflicts the, the bleeding for 10 seconds. That's super good, that's nice. But this just got buffed thanks to the addition of uh, Hebiko because she no uh, that's a lie that's a lie this this is bleeding this is bleeding this is not the one that got buffed so <laughs> we'll skip that for now uh, where are you Granny yeah it says bleeding so but she auto procs that uh, damage reduction if if you want to use it then the next one is going to be the melee one. Uh, Nagi Kotone. Nagi Kotone gives you 30% of damage increase on melee attacks. Pretty good. 
the activist whatever because it's just a knock up with damage and then the next one is the other melee supporter Ichika oops not the right button <laughs> increases damage dealt with melee attacks by 30% and reduces damage taken from poison the enemies by 30% really nice and she auto inflicts poison nice 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 and the duration is 12.5 seconds but maybe you want to use this this is going to inflict poison on the enemy just by having a debuff on them so it works pretty well with her then 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 we have you know what i'm just going to mention her because if not i'm not i'm going to forget her uh ingrid ingrid was given for us in a campaign but i i don't see that campaign it says increase particle charge for uh from attacks by uh oops I'll it says a hundred um a hundred and ten percent let's go with that uh, we have it as s3 and that's what everyone should have at most without spending nano machines uh because that's the amount that they gave us if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but you can of course uh, make max it out and make it double so it gives you a hundred and ten percent particle charge increase increases damage dealt with weapon skills by 20 percent that goes up to 40 percent and increases ultimate damage by 50 percent normal death have a 10 percent chance of inflicting hellfire to the target for 10 seconds apply every 15 seconds and she also burns the enemy so burn is just, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's just a generic damage like poison and bleed. But hellfire is a burn that also reduces the attack of the enemy. That's not bad. That's not bad. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know exactly if this uh, effect that says normal attack had a 10% chance on inflicting, of inflicting hellfire uh, apply every 15 seconds means that when you apply the buff you start to do we start the cooldown or every attack when you you attack you have the chance and if you didn't activate it you apply the cooldown i don't know but it doesn't really matter it's not the important thing about this one besides you're not going to use it in the active uh this one is really 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 good for weapon builds unfortunately we don't have that many weapon builds and definitely the best weapon is without a doubt um, uh, um, it's one of Kurenes it's Cornet of Supremacy uh, why 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 not this one this one is super cool this is awesome yeah 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 it is it is I cannot deny it it is really really good but this has just one little thing that uh, makes it really good gains 200% more particles from normal attacks for 8 seconds. So it basically <laughs> loops itself into just snowballing and abusing the, <laughs> the active. That's why it's so good. Even though the particle amount is uh, really big, the, the particle uh, requirement is big, it doesn't matter. <laughs> You're going to abuse that. So uh, it's still, we have many other good weapons, just so that you know. But... Uh, the game usually doesn't revolve around the weapons <laughs> more. It's more about the, the skills. So yeah, it is good But we don't have it five out of five and we are not getting a rerun of this at least Grimory hasn't Because this was not from an event. It was from a campaign and those usually do not get reruns Grimory we need more tickets for these ones that do not get reruns. Oh Yeah Another unfortunate case with... Where are you? Here. Yanagi Yuna. Uh, again, uh, now that I know that buffed enemies uh, are only restricted to those who have the icon on top of their head, uh, this is not that great. It only works consistently with against some specific enemies. But, 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 the active is really, really good. For 10 seconds, increases your damage to all enemies by 20%, decreases damage taken from all enemies by 20%, and increases speed by 20%. This is why it really hurts me that this support 
is uh, that there isn't any kind of stage where we can use where we can fight against buffed enemies that have like perma buffs because this is really really good and the damage reduction has a high number it's just like Hisui it is pretty good a shame that activates on buffed enemies and we don't have many uh, a lot of challenging content with buffed enemies like consistently not, not just for a couple seconds uh, let's see the next one is going to be Susune I'm just going to check uh, yeah I don't know what's up with this I'm, I'm just checking if I'm missing someone uh, of the F2Ps uh, this one we got one copy for free but it was kind of gacha uh, it was a weird event that time, so we're gonna ignore this one. Besides, it's not really that good. Um, so let's see. Uh, back to the point. The next one is going to be Susune. My god, why do we move so far? Susune is an excellent supporter. You should definitely uh, get it. Unfortunately, I... Um, I didn't think we would use the extra copies at the time, even though we, I think when we received the repeat, we already had BR. Uh, so I dismantled them and I really regret that I need the extra Suzune. She is really, really good because it gives you 40% of your damage increase, uh, of damage increase against debuffed enemies. And debuffing the enemy nowadays is super easy. And besides, she's nursed the enemy and restored your HP. Every single effect here, it's pretty good. Then, the next one is Uraru. Uraru is a generic good for machine type uh, characters. It is 36% damage increase. And the active is just whatever. It's not that great. Uh, then, oh yeah, uh, this, this girl, Sharia. Sharia, if I'm not mistaken. Sharia is in a, a tough position. She reduces damage f taken from human enemies by 40%. That's amazing. That's pretty good. But usually you don't want to go tanky with red. So if you are going on a mixed tank build and you need red for your composition, maybe you can use her. Yes. But it is niche because it's against human. But the number is big. So you see why I see that she's in a weird position? She also snares the enemies for 10 seconds. That's pretty good. And inflicts bleeds. To human again uh, restrictive uh, extra effect I don't like that but well it's what we got uh, let's see after that we move 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 to let's see am I missing someone here no now we we have checked all of them uh -huh. and we start with seasonal this was the first seasonal that we got um, it was on Halloween, it's uh, Shadow Fairy Igawa Sakura, so Magical Girl Sakura for, for friends. Reduces damage taken from all enemies by 30% uh, when maxed out. That you should have at, at most 4 copies, 3 F2P. Uh, and damage dealt by Familiar increases by uh, 40% when maxed out. This one is niche, but really good when it hits the niche. For Shisu, it's excellent. For any, well, not any, but for characters who use a lot of familiar attacks, these are great. Um, there are characters like Noah, like Astroth, like Sakura, who have familiars, but uh, Sakura is probably the one that abuses most familiars. And Hisui. Hisui, <laughs> oh, basically, uh, most of her attacks are familiar. Uh, so, during melee attacks, has a 25% chance to increase the duration of debuffs on oneself, of buffs on oneself for one second, two seconds when maxed out. And the active deals damage and increases damage dealt to all enemies by 50% for six seconds. This effect, it's really strong. It's a 50% damage increase. Uh, you cannot increase it, but it also... You can increase the duration of this if you're doing melee attacks. So on Sakura, using blue, it do it does wonders. It's excellent. 
really really good so yeah and on some other characters it's niche but when it hits oh god it's really good uh the next one the next one reina uh we have this one too but let's go with reina i'm following the order uh increase critical damage of range attacks by 36 percent and freezes the enemy good 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 uh fortunately at least blue has means of damage especially on range attack uh, with supporters like reina this is a pretty good supporter, but it's limited to range, so keep that in mind. And the freeze is really, really good because it is, it's a, it literally freezes the enemy. They stop moving and they won't move until they, you hit them, so you can interrupt their actions. And the next da instance damage, the next instance of damage is going to deal double damage. So you can just activate it and it lasts for five seconds, so you have time to do the animation the wind-up animation and use your most powerful skill like Astaroth maybe using Meteor, you know. Uh, so let's see. The next one is going to be a repeat, a repeat. Wait a moment, where is the ah? No, I I, I skipped that one. Let's go back. Let's go back. So uh, Nana, Nana is also super super good. Unfortunately, restrictive for protect type characters. For those is going to reduce the damage by 40%. Really good. The active is... Uh, I, I don't want to say it like this, but it's a cheap copy of the active of Kurenai's weapon because she got released about on the same time that Kurenai. Yeah, as you can see, limited Kurenai. And her weapon would uh, uh, make her invisible. Or no, the, the supporter would make her invisible. Yeah, in fact... If we go to here, you can see that um, vanishes for two seconds when protected character gets attacked, uh, evading all attacks. So it's a pseudo invisibility. The problem is that you cannot attack. But effects like the effect of this specific weapon are still active. So you consistently deal damage with that weapon. But it is very limited to who can actually take advantage of that a, a invisibility so it is not a good active but a very good passive effect though limited this one it is not important don't uh, get extra copies don't level it up uh, i mean it is good to have like 50 percent more damage against something but it is limited to main quest and we don't have a main quest on a difficulty level that is similar to vr so why do I care about this? I can deal enough damage with anything else. So, I mean, it is good for beginners, but I guess that we need to repeat the campaigns for beginners. I don't know uh, if they are still giving this for beginners. Let me know in the comments. But, yeah, um, it is not that great unless you're a beginner. Next, repeat, repeat, and Lily. Well, and also this one. This is the second uh, seasonal supporter. This is going to increase uh, melee damage and reduce melee damage by 26%. It also increases your damage when you evade, and it also increases your creates a zone that slows the enemy and increases your damage. It's busted, really busted for melee characters. You should totally get this one. Uh, well, <laughs> I mean. Uh, that's the problem. If you didn't get it, you're not getting it. Oh, you're getting one copy from the pack, and maybe if you get lucky with the tickets that have seasonal supports, you may get it, but it is rough. Uh, this was an excellent support, a must uh, max out, definitely. And Lilim. Lilim is also a good one. Increases damage dealt by protect type characters by 30%. Limited, but good. Limited to only protect type characters, so. Even so, it's a generic effect that is pretty good on those characters. And also, the active is pretty nice. Increase damage to all enemies by 15%, that's 30%. Reduces damage taken from all enemies by 30%, and slow them down by 30% for 10 seconds. Amazing active, amazing. Especially on top of this one. So, you do want to use it. Uh, let's see. The next one, the next event says that it's, yeah, the idol event. 
Uh, this one, it's um, niche uh, going to not good. So, um, each buff on your character, Rhea, Rhea what does Rhea make? Uh, each buff on your character decreases damage taken from enemies by 10%. It's kind of the opposite of Kana because Kana gives you uh, attack damage on buffs and she's going to give you damage reduction on buff. Um, you have to have a character that really abuses buffs to take advantage of this and it's not that great. But the active says, seems to increase the damage against all enemies by 30%. Well, that's acceptable. It auto procs, so usable. Oh, but there's something else. Increases the particle charge speed by a hundred percent let's make that 200 percent uh for 10 seconds when max out so yeah it, it is pretty good but specifically for weapon builds along with ingrid you see what i mean it is not the best yes i get it but you get a damage increase on the active that synergizes with your weapon active strategy I'm gonna try to build Cornet. Unfortunately, I only have two copies. I could use my tickets, and I love that weapon, but I don't want to. <laughs> uh, but I, I want to too at the same time. You know, <sighs> tough choices, tough choices. Uh, now, uh, repeat of Katagina, repeat of Micah. Ooh. Ah, uh, but first we have this. Uh, okay, so. Blue Lady Akiyama Rinko. Nice custom, but uh, this supporter reduces critical damage of the enemy by 26% when maxed out. Removes two debuffs at a chance of 10% when attacked. Horrible. When attacked is one of the worst activation conditions. It, it really has to be a, a really good effect for it to be worth it. So, yeah, that, and the, well, this can work on BR, especially with Queen Aragne, because she would attack you and then you would just remove those buffs that she inflicts on normal attacks or such. So, usable, yeah, in theory, yeah, I guess, but I, I, I would not, I would not use it. Uh, has a 5% uh, chance to deal 30%, that goes to 60% uh, of damage, and then make the enemy groggy during melee attacks. Eh, I mean, it's always there, so uh, it will sometimes affect, but it's not a big deal. Uh, the active fires a couldn't bullet, damage creates a black hole. So, this is going to do basically the spatial rip from Rin, uh, for, from Rinko on the ground, which is a nice control effect, but it's not good enough for you to put on the active. Like, for the most part, you don't want to use that. And now let's go to the good one. Stella. Stella is amazing. It's great. It's generic good. It's basically Homura, but without the merit. That's it. That's the only thing she does. And she deals a good amount of damage. And she's not affected by critical rate reduction. So that's great. But the, the, the damage is just what you want. It's amazing. 30% damage flat. It's great. Generic good. Oh, how... Okay, we move forward. And the next one was this. Huh. A shame. Reduces the attack of uh, the attack damage of demon enemies by 15%. That's 30% for 10 seconds when they appear. Remory, if you have del if you just deleted this, this would have been a great effect. And this is a seasonal uh, pack supporter. Y you have to pay to get four copies of this. Do you think someone wants this? 10 seconds? No, thank you. Damage dealt to enemies, to demon, to demon enemies increases by 30%. I mean, I can get that with Stella. Why would I want this? It's, it's usable, yes, but... Uh, it is niche and it is... Not good. This part, the second part is niche, this, the first part is not good. So, yeah, I, I would have preferred like uh, Shiranui, but on Demon. Imagine if it was for Demon uh, enemies, you get 20% damage reduction and 24% damage reduction and 24% damage increase. That would have been way better than 
this. Uh, reduces damage taken from all enemies by 30 by 60 percent when HP drops below 20 percent and restores 30 percent of lost HP after 10 seconds. Activates only once per battle. This is unacceptable. What are you going to have like a million HP? To, for, this this doesn't work. You need to have absurd amount of damage to to take advantage of this. Yeah, the damage reduction is super chunky, but you don't want to get below to fi below fifty percent of your HP. If you want to put activation conditions on HP Grimory, go to seventy percent of HP, fifty percent at most. 20% is an unacceptable activation condition for this. Definitely. Yeah, because it's just too risky to activate this. I know it gives you 60% damage reduction. That's a big number. Yeah, yeah, I don't care. I could even die with one hit, depending on who I'm facing. So, no. Uh, the next one, Litva. Uh, Litva, it's great, but you don't want a second copy. <laughs> so wh why do I say this? Uh, usually, we level up characters individually. Uh, there has been only... Uh, there are two ways. There was the... No. Two events, if I'm not mistaken, that allow you to use a whole team of time and that all would get EXP. And also VR. You can level up your characters, yes, if you want in VR. Uh, but it is not recommended. Having one copy of this is more than enough. And it's... Good because it gives you uh, more EXP and it gives you gold when farming. But uh, you, you are not going to use it for challenging content. So obviously do not enchant this one. It's better to enchant Mercy than this one. So let's see. After that, repeat. Ooh, Lefria. Lefria is pretty good. Increases critical rate of human type characters by 30%. Nice. I like it. Uh, limited to human type characters, yes, but, 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 it also has an active that reduces the, uh, deals the damage and increases damage taken by enemies by 30% for 10 seconds. That's really good. I know maybe don't, you don't want to use critical rate on VR, but on other, uh, challenging content like tower, like, um, uh, bonus stages and also dailies. This is a pretty good supporter. So it is not for the <laughs> the top challenging content, but it can be used everywhere else, and it's pretty good. Uh, then we have another repeat. Ooh, this one. Wait a moment. I'm just going to check. Lafria, yeah. Akina. Akina is super, super, super good. Immediately restores 26% of HP 5 seconds after getting hit. You may think, hey, that's not good. Yes, it is. Reactivates every 15 seconds. So, this you're going to use on your tanky characters. Or when you have a ton of uh, enchantment or your supporters. Because you're going to be immortal. This is super great. I know that you think this is not going to give me enough HP recovery. It is. It is more than enough HP recovery, believe me. It is amazing. This, a damage reduction support and a damage increase support, and you're done. You have a perfect build. It is super, super great. You don't think that's enough? Get, get out the with the damage increase and just put more defense, more damage reduction. So it is great. You don't like that? Well, put invincibility then, just to give a little bit more time to breathe and have and those effect activates. Uh, so it is it is amazing. Uh, it deals a good amount of damage with the active, but uh, I mean, if you want to use the active for damage, it's fine. But knockdown? No, oh, thank you. I would avoid that. Uh, repeat. Oh, oof. The bad ones. So here is where the supporter starts to get uh, not as good as they used to be. So Helga is the first of a set of supporters that increase damage against specific traits, in this case human, uh, by 30% for 10 seconds when they appear. Horrible. 
No, I don't want that. Uh, poison synergizes with one of the supporters, yes. That, that is green and is melee, but uh, not great, not great. You don't want to use this one. Uh, because of the of the time restriction. If it didn't have the trend time restriction, it would be good. And uh, then the next one is going to be, of course. Uh, let's see. Uh, am I missing some thing that is campaign wise? No. Oh yep, here we have it. Emily, Gunslinger Emily. Uh, increases the critical rate by 14% and reduces critical rate of enemy attacks by 40%. So, it would have been good if it was 30% at max for the critical rate, not 14. It's just too low. Has a 20% chance of disarming the attacker for 2 seconds, let's say 4 seconds, when attack every 15 seconds. Yikes, uh, well, I get disarming is a, a good effect, but it should have been guaranteed if you have the cooldown. I mean, the, the cooldown is pretty big. Uh, it will be 10 second cooldowns and then you disarm. No, I guess it's balanced, but I would give giving it a, a bigger chance, definitely. Like 50%. I think 50% for uh, 4 seconds with a of this arm uh, with a 10 second cooldown basically because of uh, no 11 second cooldown because for those seconds the enemy is disarmed so it would have been balanced because sometimes you cannot take hits it's just too risky or they they will explode you uh, and the active is just whatever it's damage and knockback so yeah not the greatest then the next one is going to be Ow. Aizawa Ao. Increases damage taken of demon type enemies by 50% for 10 seconds when they appear. It's just Helga, but a little bit better. But even so, Helga is 30%, she is 50%, but 10 seconds when they appear? You can use this for farming, I I'll tell you that. You can use this for farming. The active is bad, but... huh. At least they are usable on niche situations farming. <laughs> and the next one is Anne Rose. Anne Rose was given on, on, for us on an, uh, on the second anniversary, I think. We had this event that revolved around Anne Rose and Butler Asagi. And everyone voted for Anne Rose. And now you're going to be able to get one more copy if you buy the pack with the discount. Uh, and it says, increases critical rate of demon type characters by 30% and increases max HP of demon type characters by 30%. Great. Great, great, great. It is pretty good. I know you don't use this on on uh, VR, but you can actually go crit on VR. <laughs> it is not optimal, but it, it works. I have done it. Especially when you have big critical rate buffs. Like this one, 30% it's a big number for critical rate. And has a 20% chance that immediately restores 10% of HP when uh, enemy is killed. That's nice, a uh, nice ways to have HP restoration on certain characters. It is not consistent, but appreciated. And you can take advantage of this when, when there are mobs. And deals damage and makes the enemy groggy. Eh, fine, just fine. Not like amazing, but fine. So it is good for the passive more than anything. Uh, let's see. Butler Asagi. Since we're already here, Butler Asagi, we, we got like, mm, I say not too long ago, but maybe last year, six months, I don't know. Something like that. Uh, six months ago, maybe more. Uh, and it says immune to slow increases HP of human type characters by 30% when maxed out. We got, I think, three copies. And this is worth enchanting, even if, if it's only at 3 copies, because of the HP increase. The immune to slow is already invaluable. It is super, super good. Sometimes it's low, it is uh, very rough on some stages. And the extra passive and active are great. 
normal melee attack increases speed by 1%, let's say 2% for 4 seconds, and stack up to uh, 10 times. Really good to have a speed increase, and deals damage, and reduces the speed of the enemy by 20% for 10 seconds. Amazing, it's just an amazing support. You do want to enchant this one. Now, uh, Susune Arabella. Arabella is just generally good, but only for challenging content. Only for stages where there is only a boss. Because, uh, for example, on Tower 20, uh, 75, there are many enemies which are not boss. There are only three bosses there. So you don't take full advantage of this supporter there. You take full advantage of this supporter on stages like Chrismatron on the event, which was only that boss, or uh, VR, where we have only those bosses. Well, uh, Machine and Demon have mobs, but they're unimportant. You do get uh, more damage on that boss, and that boss is, boss is super tanky, so it's worth it. Um... The Time of 5 demo event, it didn't give us a supporter, I see. Okay. A repeat on Shariam. Oh, yeah, this one. Uh, this one I don't like that much. Uh, let's see, yeah. Increases damage dealt to by 3%, like, let's say 6%, per enemy nearby. I don't like the per enemy nearby condition. But it is okay for farming, uh, especially if you have a way to to get the enemies near you. Uh, so it is usable, but not the greatest. In fact, the best effect is probably the active that gives you uh, an eight percent, an eight second cool disarm effect. That is good for the disarm strategy if you want to use that. Uh, but it is not my favorite because the enemy can move and maybe you're not going to be disarming them enough. Let's see, uh, repeat on Reina, and then, uh, let's go with this one, Onisaki Kirara. Busted, this is Susune but better. <laughs> well, Susune but different, because Susune also restores HP. This one restores HP consistently until you hit 15%. If you hit 15% of your HP or below, you lose this effect, but usually that doesn't happen. You get damage increase on debuff to enemies. You uh, deal damage to any enemy nearby you when you kill an enemy and freeze those enemies that receive the damage for two seconds. So it is a pretty good effect. And the active creates an area that increases the character's speed by 10% for 10 seconds in that area. Pretty nice, pretty nice. Nana Seayumu. Uh, it is a difficult one. She is usable, sure. Especially on fast attackers. She has a 5% chance to deal additional 200% damage when attacking a debuff enemy, which is not a difficult activation condition on the debuff part, but the 5% is rough. Emily can abuse this? Yes! Uh, but you would like to land that damage increase on your skills, and that's just not consistent. So, if you don't have anything better on blue to use on a damage build, it's usable for the fast attackers, but not the best. Though the active is nice, it reduces, no, yes, it reduces the speed of enemies by 10% for 8 seconds. Uh, so, it auto procs herself also, that's pretty good. Um, let's see. The next one is going to be Misaki. Uh, a must enhance, definitely, if you can get another coffee, if we get a repeat of this, uh, this event, uh, get her. <laughs> She's just amazing. She increases your damage by, by 50% on BR, and she heals the party and restores particles. It's super good. It's just great. The next one is going to be Melt. Melt, it is the red canna, because each buff on your character is going to increase damage against all enemies by 10%. And increases your fortitude by 10, by 20% with the active and reduces damage taken by 40% for 5 seconds. <sighs> so the active is kind of an emergency button, as you can see. It has high cooldown at six, 63 seconds, but the damage reduction is big. So if you see an incoming attack and you're not going to bait it, just push the button and you're going to save yourself. So, yeah. Uh, but... Basically, if you have a build, a red build or a mixed build, 
that abuses buffs, this is a good supporter to use. And then we have uh, another repeat, more repeats, Asagi, uh, Butler Asagi. Um, aha, here we go. Uh, first this one, first this one. Uh, Ban Kurenai. Ban Kurenai is in a weird spot where she has a good effect, yet is unusable. Increases damage against enemies in the air by 25%. That will be 50% when maxed out, and increases damage against stunned enemies by 30%. So why do I say this is unusable? Because of super armor. You don't get the enemies into there if they are uh, if they have super armor. And you don't stun them if they have super armor. So the it has a, a 30% chance to decrease the supporter's skills remaining cooldown by five by 10% when dodging melee attacks to an enemy in the air. This sounds super weird because an enemy in the air doesn't attack. Uh, I mean, there are a couple exceptions, like the the high jump kicks from the Sukubai, but uh, yeah, like, uh, what exactly does this mean, Remor? Yeah, I don't know. Um, and the activist stuns the enemy nearby, dealing damage. But the the important thing is that it procs the the effect here, and that you can abuse it thanks to the cooldown reduction on the active of the supporter. So, if we get a survival ball with a ton of mobs uh, and just a couple bosses, we could abuse this. Uh, but if there's a boss or an enemy with super armor, this just becomes obsolete, and that's a problem there. Uh, unless they don't have uh, like a ton of super armor, and we can actually just defeat them quickly. In that case, uh, it would work. Uh, let's see. And the next one is... Uh, wait a moment, I need water. Ah, Kosue. Kosue increases, increases critical rate by 40% against buffed enemies, which we know that BR enemies are not buffed, only uh, basically the twins. So, yeah. Niche activation condition. We really need those buffed enemies. Like perma-buffed enemies. Reduces damage taken by 3% per each enemy nearby. At least it has uh, another extra passive, but it is not that great. Uh, because it depends on the number of enemies. And also stuns the enemies. Mm, not that good, unfortunately. Then... Ooh, this one. Uh, wait a moment, wait a moment. Here she is. Uh, Serica. Serica increases damage by 50% to disarm enemies and also disarm the enemies for 10 seconds. This is pretty good for the disarm strategy. You can use it as a main since it's 10 seconds the disarm it's bigger than the the other red that disarms. So yeah, it is a good option. But usually you don't want to use three disarms, you want to use Sakura with which su with which su uh, in the in the main and uh, then you can use the other supporters with the other characters with uh, um, disarm actives. And let's see. Uh, the next one is going to be... Wait a moment. This one. Evil Flower uh, Aska. This increases critical rate of range attacks by 30% and reduces damage taken by 6% per nearby enemy. Um, the 30% critical rate increase on range, I don't like that much because it's restrictive. But it is usable by some characters like Astroth, for example, like pure uh, range attackers. Unfortunately, you want to use this on a uh, machine type characters because it increases the damage of ally machine type characters by 16%. So you want to use this on a machine type uh, team. And it also snares the enemy. Th those effects are pretty good, but we really need to strengthen this, uh, this core. Uh, it is usable. I know that there's builds to abuse that uh, with a machine type build with Emily and, 
and Saika. But uh, I, I think we can even we can strengthen this further. So maybe in the future it will be better than it is now. It's usable, but that's about it. Uh, then, ah, oh yeah, the healer, the healer, no. Weird. It says that the the healer was first. And I don't see the healer now that I mention it. What a moment. I have to... Ah, uh, it's because it's this one. Uh, the color, the color. So, uh, Yasuyama Yachiyo. So, this one consumes 10% of particles every 10 seconds to restore max HP of yourself and allied characters by 6%. Not apply when there are no, no, aren't enough particles. This is excellent for a tank. Unfortunately, you're going to lose... Uh, like damage reduction, but you're going to put the HP restoration for your whole party on VR. It's amazing. And it restores particles on the active. It's pretty good. So nice. I do suggest this one if you're a PvP, no, not PvP, a Time of 5 VR enthusiast like myself, but like it is for consistency if you're still climbing the ladder it is not to hit the the top uh floors of of time of ibr for that it's pure damage then the next one is this this is um weird because it's bad and good at the same time reduces damage taken by 14 percent for machine type characters and increase damage dealt uh, for machine type characters by 14 percent it is very weak that effect but then we have the active that says that you gain armor that reduces the damage taken by 40% for 5 seconds upon dodging every 15 seconds. So it's just a 10 second cooldown. But the, the damage reduction is high, very high. You get in total, uh, when both our effects are active, 54% damage reduction. It is pretty good, but you are sacrificing the active, so it's kind of good. You can use this on PvP, uh, just so that you know, but... Uh, it is difficult to recommend. Now that I see her, what's up with her legs? She's kind of like... Like Asuka? Are those like glass legs? Well, I'm not gonna focus on that. Uh, let's see. I uh, rip it on Helga. I uh, rip it on Ao. And then... We have... Okay, we have to check this one. This was an unfortunate case. This, this is a really good supporter, but we only got one copy on the third anniversary. It increases damage dealt to all enemies by 13%, 26 when maxed out. Reduces damage taken to all, from all enemies by 26% when maxed out. And increases HP by 20% when maxed out. And it also increases your critical rate, no, your critical damage. Uh, every time you make a combo, and stacks up to three times and lasts five seconds. And you uh, summon one of these, depending on the color, and they deal damage. So the, the passive is that what really matters, but the thing is we only got one copy for free. This supporter, unfortunately, it's here on my list, as you can see, and it costs just as much as Chisui, so it is horrible. It is definitely good, but it is definitely not worth it to to use your nano machines on this. Uh, you can get more more value out of other supporters, so keep that in mind. It is great. It is great, but God, Grimoire, you should have given us more copies of this. I hope that they give us throughout the year a couple more copies, maybe two copies. That would be more than enough, I guess. Huh. We'll see. And the next one is Galilim. Galilim is super good. It is like a downgrade on um, Susune, but usable nonetheless, because she gives you 20% damage increase and reduction when you're uh, hitting a debuffed enemy or uh, receiving damage from a debuffed enemy. And uh, you deal damage to all enemies and for 15 seconds increase the debuff and stun duration by 50%. So, yeah, 
usable, but not necessary for the most case. I, I told you that nowadays it's really easy to debuff the enemy, so it's not necessary, but yes, it, you can use it if you want. Uh, the active. And the, the passive is great. Now, let me check. Oof. Oof. Let, let's go with Asagi. Uh, Asagi is uh, niche good, because you want to use this on human and against demon. When below 30% HP, increase fortitude by 14%. Uh, bad effect, but uh, don't take and forget about that. Reduces damage from demon type enemies by 30% and increase damage dealt by 30%. So that, that part is good, it's usable. And it has an extra passive, increases speed of human type characters by 10%. Super good. And you deal damage. Stun the target, and if it's a demon, it adds additional damage. So it is usable. A little bit niche, but usable. Then we have this put poor thing, Lamarck. So increases the healing effect of human type ally characters by 6%. Damage dealt by human type characters increases by 26%. Yes, everything nice and good. But then we have this almost 70 seconds on the cooldown immediately restores 30 no 26 percent of low hp of ally characters and remove two debuffs stun and groggy state uh, if the target is human type recover an additional five percent of max hp this is supposed to be something that you use as means of recovery but come on nanami is better than this god look at that cooldown it should be like 40%, not 68%. We want to abuse this, not limit this. A real shame what they did to this character. As I mentioned, uh, we really need something like FGO strengthening system for uh, previous supporters. Uh, like, Remory, think about doing uh, updates on batches of supporters. Maybe uh, just tweak a little bit. 10 supporters or 5 supporters, whatever you want, but we really need to work on some supporters. Some are perfectly balanced and they're good at the, as they are. Some are useless and they're not going to be used, useful no matter what you do with this. Uh, well, maybe they, they can snare, uh, but there are some that hit the miss the mark just by a little, just by a couple numbers or effects, so uh, think about uh, reworking some of the supporters, doing strengthening campaigns, and it would be great that we also get, on those strengthening campaigns, some tickets to get some of the AF2P supporters. Select tickets so that we don't uh, get chance base, we get what we need, especially for newer players who didn't get all of those old supporters. Oh, well, let's continue. We're about to finish. The last two or three. Uh, yeah. Uh, the next one is Santa Anemone. She's pretty bad unless you're doing PvP because she reduces HP restoration by 40% for 10 seconds when hitting a debuffed enemy. So uh, it's not good because we don't have an enemy that abuses HP restoration in PvE. But you can use it in PvP, besides the HP is going to allow you to win. Uh, so, yeah, it is usable. But I'm not a PvP enthusiast. Then we have Emily Simon's Carol. This is another um, seasonal supporter. Reduces the duration of debuff or stuns on you by 20% when maxed out. Increases critical rate of all attacks by 22% uh, when maxed out. So these two effects are terrible. If this was 30%, it wouldn't be that bad, but it is just 22. Increases fortitude of ally characters for 5 seconds by 50% when HP is below 20% and it's only 1 per barrel. What did I just say about this? 50, 70, not 20. Keep that in mind, Remory. Uh, the fortitude is nice because it's kind of a pseudo invincibility, but uh no 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 reduce damage taken by allies by 50 percent and restore particle of characters by 40 percent for 
15 seconds by cleansing spirits. The active is actually usable, but I mean, without all this of this on the line, I think you don't want to use it. And the last one, which is going to be Koharu, New Year Koharu. Increases damage against machine type enemies by 16% and reduces damage taken from machine type enemies by 16%. And electrocutes the target. Electrocute is nice, but horrible, horrible, horrible. And I'm assuming this electrocute is actually inflicting the debuff because it's not in, in yellow. Because, uh, let's see. Uh, who debuffs the enemy? She does. Wet is in yellow, you see? Wet is in yellow. But for some reason, this electrocute isn't in yellow. So it could be just an effect. But since it has a duration, I assume it's the, the debuff. But this is just too weak to be usable, unfortunately. Uh, it is a real shame that nowadays supporters are, are not as good. That's why I say that we need repeats on on supporters. Well, not repeats, but tickets that allow us to choose exactly uh, the F2P supporters. Not all supporters, only F2P supporters that we are not going to get more reruns of. We need uh, an event that gave us that give us ten tickets of those. Uh, so that a uh, newer player can catch up with all players and that all players can complete those who those supporters that they skip or get more copies of those supporters they they want for their teams. Now, let's analyze very, very quickly which supporters you want to use or which supporters you want to enhance. Usually you want to enhance them at least up to level 5 but level uh, plus 10, enchanting up to level 10, it's ideal. More than that, go to 11, 12, 13 at most. Because from 14 beyond, it's better to just have the enchanting boosters to do that. So, which ones you want? Onigumo? Definitely. Yosora? Niche but usable. We're going to skip these. Uh, you don't want to enchant this because if you're going to rely on the disarm strategy, you are not going to use HP, supposedly. If something goes wrong, wrong, it's nice to have the HP, but for the most part, I would suggest you don't enchant this one. Uh, Mica is a good option. Uh, let's continue. Uh, Kato, another good option to enchant. Um... Just as Yosora, Nanami is niche. You can enchant her if you want, if you don't have better options, but it's not the best for the highest level of, of challenging content, uh, depending on who you're using. If you're using uh, characters without HP recovery, yes, you enchant those two. Uh, Nino, enchant her, no questions. Uh, Kotone, Kotone Nagi, enchant her, no questions. Uraru, the same. Enchant her. Um, uh, what's the name? Shirayuki. Enchant her. Uh, this not no unless you are a weapon specialist, a weapon active specialist. Uh, that's the only uh, viable scenario where I would enchant her. Besides, we only got three copies. Uh, this one enchant because uh, it gives you defense. It's for tanky builds, so obviously you want the extra HP. Uh, the same for this one. Enchant. 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 Uh, if you have someone who can take advantage of this uh, and it's one of your main attackers, do enchant. Uh, I mean the familiar part specifically because the damage reduction is generally good. But it is, it is nice, but uh, you have to be very careful. This one is niche because it's human, but it's worth to enchant, but also it's uh, a difficult color to use, so depends on your strategy. Really, check your strategy before you enchant this one. Um, huh? This one enchant, pretty good. 
Uh, where is the other one? Uh, Reina Enchant, also good. Let's see. Mama Nui Enchant, pretty good. Um, Lidim Enchant, also good. Uh, the same as Ingrid. Only if you're a weapon especially the Enchant, I do not suggest. Or if you have a character which buffs themselves and you can abuse the, the effect. A Don't Enchant. Enchant, obviously, Stella. Uh, let's see. Don't enchant. Don't enchant. Enchant. Ah, yes, enchant, but it's not a high priority. Lefria is really, really good, but it's not going to help you in BR. So if your priority is BR, this is not a high priority. For other challenging content, for everything else that is not BR, this is good. So enchant, but not your highest priority. Remember that. Uh, Akina, enchant. Very, very, very good. Don't enchant. Don't enchant. Don't enchant. Enchant. Yeah, this one is pretty good. But only if you have multiple copies. If you have one copy, I do not suggest you enchant this one. Um, the same enchant if you have her S3. Uh, if you have her S1, then don't. Enchant, obviously. Arabella. Don't enchant. Uh, the same. It's for... Uh, Disarm strategy, so you don't want to enchant this one. Um, the next one, Ayumi. Uh, I don't suggest you enchant her. I enchant her because I didn't have anything better for certain DPS on blue. But uh, I do not recommend you enchant this one. Enchant, obviously, max out, please. Um, enchant, but also not your highest priority. Depends really on which characters you have that buff themselves and want to go red. Or mix with red. Um, let's see. Don't enchant. Sorry. You're, I, I love the, the numbers. But the activation conditions are, are pretty bad. So no. Don't enchant. Uh, don't enchant. Because you're going to do the disarm strategy with this one. Uh, and as I said, you don't need it. Enchant. Definitely. If you want to use this one, do enchant it. But only if you want to use it. Remember, this is not to tackle the highest levels. It's just to get consistency on BR. Uh, on your farming, I mean. Uh, yeah. If you want to, I haven't tested this one. But I know that this active is busted. But also it's not active all the time. So uh, I won't say that you shouldn't. But neither will I say that you should enchant her. It is there. It's a thing. Um, depends on the number of copies that you have. If you have more than three, okay. But I do not suggest that you enchant her if it's one. I mean, if you don't have anything better, just do so. But, uh, you know, I hate when they don't give us copies. And I hate that we still have the... Uh, you don't see it here, but we have to pay a ton of money to change the color. I hate that. Uh, this one is good to enchant. Actually, it's, uh, actually it's pretty good, so you can do that. Niche, if you want to enchant it, it, it is dead, but, but it is not a high pr priority for me. Do not, please. Uh, do Well, if you're a PvP enthusiast, then yes, but otherwise, no. Uh, for the most part, no. And um, yeah, no. As I mentioned, uh, the more we advance, the less viable they become. They are not making uh, that many good supporters nowadays on the F2P department. Which is fine because we can use them as fodder for the exchange facility. So we just get one copy max out and then we use them here and we have a chance to get um, limited supporters. Uh, really good limited supporters. But, uh, you know, it is rough. Uh, we also need good good supporters. Gremory, do alternate between good and bad uh, rewards on events. <laughs> Please, because uh, look at everything. We Most of the good supporters are all supporters. Nowadays, the last ones are pretty rough. Ooh, like... This one is bar barely usable. 
this one is horrible. This one is only PvP focused. This one is pretty bad. Uh, let's see. This one has a really horrible activation condition. A really horrible passive, even though it has a good active. So, yeah. Uh, let's hope that Gremory... Oof! And oof! Oof! And oof! So, let's hope that Gremory changes that. And that's my evaluation, guys. I, I hope that you liked the video. And I hope that this helped you decide where to uh, use your materials. I know it's very difficult for us to gather these things. Um, and do remember to to use the tip of um, using the gold gacha to get wood weapon and burn them to get uh, fluid. And then if you want specifically the, the belt, you can change them, change them in the exchange facility here you can exchange the fluid for the cutting fluid for ritual belts it's not a great exchange but it is an f to p way to do this so that's gonna be about it for today and i'll be seeing you next time bye